Hey everyone, this is Lori Fetrick, and I have a special announcement right now, and that is this. So really pay attention if you can. And that is if you go in and you rate and review my podcast, what I'm going to do is I am randomly going to choose one person per month. Yes, one person per month. I'm going to grab and I'm going to have you come on to my podcast and we're going to do a rapid fire. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. It'll get some audience participation out there. And I want to give back. So this is me giving back to my audience. So please go rate, review my podcast, and I will pick at random one person per month to come on my podcast and do a rapid fire. So thank you so much and go right now and rate and review. Welcome back to Chillin' with Ice, and I'm your host, Lori Fetrick, and we are here with a, an extremely wonderful guest today, and um, I've got my my engineer here, Jeff. We are Chillin' with Ice. What's How, up? Nothing much. How was your week? It was great. It's great. I got some friends in town, uh, one of which, uh, who the audience may know, uh, was on you know, Beer with Friends, Jai. He's at the Dodger game, being the mascot. So, nice. Yeah, but it's been fun. Very cool. Yeah. Nice, so, nice. Yeah, how was El Paso? You were just there, El right? Paso was fun. The Comic-Con was a lot of fun. And I actually got to meet, I always meet some really amazing people, obviously, yeah. when I go to these Comic-Cons. And actually, my our, our guest today is actually, I met her at the Comic-Con. Oh, no way. Yeah, and she was she was a guest, um, kind of a stalker fan. I'm, co I'm totally <laughs> joking. <laughs> the, the first stalker on Chilling with Ice. I I'm love totally it. Joking. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it was the the Comic Con was amazing. The promoter was great. Uh, the weather was perfect. So Sweet. you know, I got to do a um, a couple morning shows before the Comic Con on that Friday. I got to do so that came out beautiful. So whoever awesome. is, if you, anybody wants to see those morning shows, definitely go to my um, my channel, which is my website actually, which is lauriefetrick.com. And you can scroll down and you can see everything that I've been doing and my upcoming appearances and stuff. Gotcha. So gotcha. yeah, that awesome. was a great thing. So yeah. let me introduce, yeah. I'm going to introduce yeah, my who do next we have guest today? here. Does she live in El Paso? Yes, yeah, she actually does live in El Paso. Her Perfect. name is Aisha Dagger. She had to help me pronounce that last name because she threw some things in there. <laughs> she is a licensed professional counselor. Um, associated LPC. Uh, she has a master's of science in mental health counseling. Sweet. She is from El Paso, Texas. And so welcome, Aisha. How are you doing today? Thank hey, you. Aisha. I'm doing wonderful. Thank you all for having me today. Thank you all for also visiting El Paso. I know, so right? It was, it was great. Else. It was fun. Appreciate Did you have fun it. at the Comic-Con? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I loved it. I love seeing all the different creators, all the different artists that come out and vendors and just sharing their stories. And I'm all about the connection. And it was just wonderful as always. And yeah. great weather. You know? And great Sun weather. City. Exactly. Great. <laughs> and it was kind of cool because we connected. I mean, you came to the table, you and your husband. Yes. And we just started talking and then, you know, you, you let me know that you're a therapist and your specialty is in, you know, trauma therapy. And of course, we just started talking and went off. And I was like, oh, my God, yes, this yes. is a great podcast for people. So um, let's kind of dive into this. And that is give me a little bit of back, you know, about you and your background and how you actually got into this field. Oh, that that's super great. Um so let's let's talk about a little bit of, of Aisha's childhood, my childhood. Okay. Um, so it was rough. I actually had a really rough childhood, I was really, really poor. Uh, both my parents were addicts, my mother and my stepfather. So a uh, little trigger warning for people there. Um, and um, I knew I had to go to school, Lori. Mm -hmm. I knew in order for me to get out of this, I need a piece of paper, mm -hmm. right? I am Hispanic and so, I was first generation getting a higher degree um, for school and stuff like that. And so when I was going to school, um, I got a, a bachelor's in health promotion. Mm -hmm. I love health. I love community and connecting people. And you're going to laugh. I went to go and get a second bachelor's. I went to uh, become a registered dietitian. I'm an RD dropout because I saw the need of mental health. And that kept calling me to my roots. Oh, well, good. You know, with a lot of the eating disorders, a lot of that different stuff that was going on when I was a student that I couldn't touch. Mm. Yes, I could give you a menu and fix all these deficiencies with numbers, but I couldn't get to the root and the cause. 
of helping this person. Mm -hmm. And it was out of my hands. And I felt incomplete. I was like, I can't do this. There's no way I could do this. Um, so fast forward some time, it took a few months off, took a break. And, uh, you know, everyone would joke with me and be like, you, you need to be a therapist. Um, I was also a people pleaser. I, I was always like trying to, you know, hear people's stories and make people feel great, you know, and connection and laugh. And I was like, you know what? Let's just get my master's in mental health counseling. Let's do it. Let's see what it's about. Um, and I remember as little Aisha growing up, I would see different therapists, right? Um, you know, with CPS being involved and different things like that. I couldn't find a super good connection. There was always like this piece missing of my healing journey. Mm -hmm. And um, it was that part of trauma-informed care. Hmm. Why I'm always like this, right? Why is this other part of me like this? And we'll kind of get into those different parts work um, until I found the agency that I was doing my internship and practica do this type of work. Um, and that's, that's where you have it. That's where the story just kind of lit on fire and I'm running with my ass on fire, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I enjoy it. I enjoy every single moment of it. And you know, what's my favorite part? Hmm. It's because of storytelling. Okay. That you can't buy. Tell me, what, can't tell me a little away. bit more about the storytelling and why you can't. I mean, tell me what that connection is with you. That to me is like, um, you know, I'm, I'm super old school. Yes, I'm young, but um, I don't live on the internet, you know? So I will like sit there at a cafe and I'll chat to like the person, the cashier, the person behind me. I think that's what we need in life. I think that is that human connection that we have. That is the most beautiful sentiment thing. So do you we think we're share. really, we're missing that, especially in this time of our life with all the, all the internet and the face net, uh, face net, <laughs> face Facebook, <laughs> FaceNet, you know. Yeah. Yeah. InstaX. Insta InstaX. I mean, let's just rename them all. <laughs> but, you know, nowadays yeah. it's like, you know, everybody's online and they're on their phones and nobody's looking up from their phone to actually look at someone in the eyes and say hello. You know, so I, I, I'm old school as well, you know, and that is how do we how do we do that with people i mean how do we get that connection back i mean i know i try to stay off my phone as much as i can when i'm in public and stuff and i want to be present i want to be present in that moment with that person and nowadays it's it's very hard to find that i would imagine i mean all these yeah, dating apps absolutely. that are out there i mean people are dating they're, yeah. they're dating on dating apps instead of actually going outside their house walking out the door and going somewhere and meeting someone in person nowadays, that's gone. I have a great tidbit. I have, so there, there is a story that was shared by a professor. Okay. And I don't know if you guys have heard about this. So the story goes, this research goes, there is four floors, right? And so it's a mixer of dating. And um, there's a group of women and there's men in each floor. Okay. And so we instruct the women, hey, ladies, you're going to find the man of your dreams, right? You guys gave us your inquiry. We wrote it down. We brought great, amazing men for you to meet. You guys are going to go. So the first group, they go in. They're meeting the guys. They're chatting. They're getting it on. They're like, wow, this is great. So then their time ends, right? So then the ladies are like, man, let's go to the second floor. Let's see what's on the second floor. So the ladies go on the second floor, they're chit-chatting. Some of them find the guys that are like, hey, I want to date this guy. This guy's great. So then the ladies go on the third floor. Boom. Dream man. They found everything that they need, right? They're, they're enjoying the guy. They're enjoying the conversations. They're like, you know what? This is it. So then the next floor, the ladies go. They're on the roof with nobody because we keep wanting more. And more, oh. and more and we are human there's a lot of imperfections yes i will have my list but you know what at the end of the day we have a balance beam right right my husband is going to leave socks on the damn floor 
but he picks them up <laughs> two to three days later. I don't care, you know, but it's not perfect. <laughs> that's, Pendulum, that's right? Me. That's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a pile of socks <laughs> next to my- Do you put wet towels? <laughs> I have a pile of socks next to my bed on my side. And my, my girlfriend walks by the other day and goes, um, I, think, I, I think your socks are having babies because they keep accumulating in this one pile. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah. And you're like, where the hell are my socks at? I'm Shit. like, I'll get to it. I you promise know? I'll get to it. <laughs> do you buy new packs, Lori? Do I new do I buy what? <laughs> when you, when you get, do you buy new packs of socks? Because <laughs> you're like, I don't want to wash them. Or no, they're missing. I'm not that I'm bad. I am, I'm so not that bad. I oh mean, I will I will do my laundry and stuff. <laughs> but I understand what you're saying. We always want more. You know, it's like yeah. it's it's that yeah. ever so craving of more, more, more. Sometimes it's not bad. Because, I mean, sometimes that drives you. But then again, when it comes to other things, um, people, meeting people, intimacy, things like that, more, 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 you know? And sometimes yeah, you just got to go, right. wait a minute. I'm happy with what I have right now. I'm, I'm happy with this, you know? Um, right. It's funny because you and I were, were talking and, and I do believe in therapy. I really do believe in therapy. And I haven't, I mean, I was doing therapy some like when I was like 28 to 30 area, off and on, checking in, checking out, you know. And I just recently, and uh, like I was explaining to you, I recently actually just started going to check in, you know, to kind of check in awesome. with myself and and what's happening and Maybe. you know. Am and, and, you know, and it's like, am I good? <laughs> you know, am I am I going through a midlife crisis? Am I a little crazy here? I mean, I think we all have a little you crazy. Know what? <laughs> that's that's what that's why we're human, right? That mm -hmm. evolution of all those things, right? But I think you said the perfect key there. You're checking back in, yeah, right. That's super important. Like we every day our lives, we get shit thrown at us all the damn time, mm -hmm. right? And um, we're not born, right? We learn how to walk and crawl, but they're like, they don't teach us, hey, let's go ahead and teach you how to regulate your emotions. Mm -hmm. How about that? You know, they, they don't teach us that. And speaking of which, that's how we got on the subject because you asked me if I had seen yeah. a movie. What, the, kid, yes. the kid's Inside movie. Inside Out. Inside Out. Yes. And yes. That's so where that is like started. with IFS. Yes, yes. Um, that inside out portion where uh, we talk about internal family systems and the creator was named Richard Swartz. He's wonderful. He's still teaching us to this day. He does see you, so you can find books. And so what his theory is about, so little background guys. So when I say the lens of theory, there's many, many theories, right? Us therapists utilize. So here we're gonna talk about the lens of IFS. So we're gonna be talking a little bit of parts work. And, Tell me what you mean um, by IFS. We, so it's called internal family system. Okay, thank you. Um, and so um, when we're looking at IFS, um, this core of therapy, it looks at our central part as an ecosystem, right? The self is us. So the self would be Lori, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, other parts of this, uh, their four main characters, the self, manager, firefighter, and we have exiles. And so um, what these different parts do, they're created even as children that we do have. Um, they're gonna protect you at all cost. And you're gonna even have parts that are managers, they're protectors, and um, sometimes they're gonna take over. They're gonna take over and they're gonna be like, this is a threat, that's a threat. And what we talked about is like, does the brain even know how old we are? And this is still truly a real threat, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is how we start naming those parts into therapy. Um, another part is the firefighter. And this one can be good or bad. It's like the double-edged sword, damned if I do and damned if I don't. <laughs> um, and that is, it, it's going to come in. It's going to be like, whoo, you got a lot of stress. Hold on. Let's, let's take it slow. Let's take a rewind. And it's going to protect us. And then other times it won't protect us. That's when we can feel suicidal ideations. We can feel like, oh my God, the world is ending. What do I do? How do I cope? Um, and then the other part is in IFS is uh, exile, right? Deep embedded trauma that we have not worked on, mm -hmm. you know? 
um, parts from childhood that are probably repressed or anything of that matter that we, we're like, you know what, we're going to tuck this in and we don't want to touch it mm -hmm. and it's going to stay there. But as we become adults and we're doing things and meeting partners and, you know, uh, opening businesses, like how you shared with me earlier, uh, sometimes these different parts come out and that's when it can get us in a little bit of trouble. Mm. And that's when we start discovering, okay, what are these parts that are overriding us? Um, sometimes parts kind of mesh. It can be Aisha's teenage rebel self with, you know, her mama bear mm -hmm. and if they're going to mesh and they're going to protect at all costs. And they, sometimes they're not even reasonable, right? They're just going to do whatever it takes to protect Aisha herself. Gotcha. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of a background of IFS. Well, yeah. Um, and so when you see that Disney movie, right, Lori, uh -huh. you see the, the kid, you know, seeing like anger and happiness and like going through her life. And that's a little bit of a tidbit of like what we do with that. Mm -hmm. Now, in when we were it's, talking, it's really which was interesting to me, you said something about when it comes to trauma and stuff like that, that, that the brain doesn't know the age. Am I correct on that? Yes. Yeah, so Explain what happens what that is means. the so uh, as we are maturing, as the brain is evolving, it's, it's the prefrontal cortex part right here, the delicious part that I always love to tell uh, <laughs> my clients is this is where rational thinking comes from, regulation, emotion, um, and it can also be incorporated with our amygdala, another part of the brain. Mm -hmm. And um, the amygdala is survival mode. Right. That's that primitive part that we've had developed. And it's that smoke detector. It's like what's going on? Hypervigilance. Right. It's always on, 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 on. Mm -hmm. So for me, for example, I had a very traumatic childhood. I was always on because I didn't know what was going to happen. There was always mayhem. There was no co-regulation. There was always flight or flight or freeze. Uh, there was also like submit and shame in me. Right. That I had all those years i'm gonna have a birthday i'm gonna be 29. so imagine what that does to our brain mm -hmm. right a protecting right protecting guess what i would always do my brain the way it would protect me aisha you go hide in your closet lock all your doors and become really really small mm. become really really small hmm. so they don't notice you interesting remember that n-word needs mm, the n-word needs, N -word needs. Then we needs. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have that. I'm 29 years old, about to be. And if I hear a slam door or someone with a high voice male, I'm like, oh shit. Little Aisha comes out in that parts work. Hmm. It's like, oh, I'm going to protect you. Let's go and hide. Uh, myself, this is how we talk. I'm like, Aisha, you've got this. Little Aisha, let me hold your hand. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It was the wind that just shut the door. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Right. And then that's when you talk to those parts. But if we don't know this, right, that brain response, it's going to keep doing it and doing it because that is survival. That amygdala is protecting. And they say it takes about 25 years for that prefrontal cortex just to even fully mature. Really? Because we need all those life experiences. Yeah, we need all those fuck ups and like <laughs> touching our hand in the hot pan, you know? Exactly. That is Hitting that stove life over life. and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. It's mistakes. like, what? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we keep doing that shit too. Trust right. me. <laughs> I know. So now, how does it come about with, um, maybe you can explain this to me because. I really, I, I don't understand this. So I'm going to ask you this question since you have gone through the nutritional, you know, part of it. Okay. But you want to help people. Mm -hmm. So what I don't understand is our, our country is so, it's, it's kind of out of control when it comes to obesity now, you know, and yet there are a thousand million trillion programs out there about fitness and and how to eat and how to take care of yourself and I've always been the advocate of we've got one body you know and this is this mm -hmm. is my body is like my human you know and and somebody said something the other day and it just clicked 
And they said to me, uh, they said, you know, when somebody says they have a little kid and they go, I think the question was, you know, why do you care so much about your child? And they're like, well, because it's my, it's my child. It's my human. Okay. Well, we, me, I am my human. This is my human that I'm supposed to take care of, you know, and a lot of people don't understand that yeah. and they don't take the time to take care of their human, which is them. And it made so much sense to me. And I was just like, oh my God, that's so brilliant. You know, but okay. So with that being said, my question is this, with the way that our country is and the obesity is so, you know, rampant. And I, I do, I do really blame a lot of it on our food system. I really do. It's absolutely terrible. But I see a mother inside of a supermarket and she's very obese. But then I look next to her and I see her child and the child is obese at five and six years old. And in my mind, I automatically ask myself, wait a minute, she knows what it's like to feel this weight and to carry this around. And this is, I mean, people say, yes, be happy in your own skin. And I want people to be happy in their own skin, but that's got to be so hard on the body to carry that weight and the way the, the, that little heart that's the size of a softball to take care of a 250 pound, you know, person. So my question to you, and I know this is a long drawn out question, but how can they, how can they let their kid be obese knowing that this is where they're at? What happens to the, the, the psyche, the mental part of this? I, I, I love this question and I love your passion. I, I see it in you. It's burning in there. You know, you're like, let me fix this. I, you I know? do. And I'm a fixer, I, think... I realized. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You need to be an IO psychologist to fix the world. <laughs> Too many years of school. But, you know, yeah, why not? Why not? We got time. We got time to kill, right. you know? It's all right. But, um, you know, going back to what your question is, I think it's a very multifaceted question. Okay. We have so many layers. So I'll take me, for example, Lori. I was very low income, poverty, right? My parents didn't think of nutritional value um, when they can only squeeze X amount, right? And this is just the tip of my side, right? And um, how much could I buy on food stamps to feed five kids, mm -hmm. right? So that's one thing that okay. I saw, at least in my life. Um, but I'll tell you, because there's a little twist in the story, okay, out of us five, Everyone was on the larger end, except for me. Hmm. We joked about being a runner because I was a power lifter. Mm -hmm. My way to escape things, I would run, 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 run. Did I have the best food, the best nutrients? No, I did not. But I took advantage of after school programs. I took advantage of escaping my life through sports. Okay. I can understand that. So I'll put that. my personal side on. Okay. So let me put my professional side on from okay. dropping out as a dietitian in school and then therapist. Okay. I think what we see now is um, it, it's survival, I think, Lori. I think we see a lot of survival is um, are these single parents? Do we have education? Um, you know, yes, also dollar value mm -hmm. um, amount. Who's cooking at home? Mm -hmm. You know, is mom actually cooking? Is it grandparents? Are they switching out many different roles that we see here? Um, I think it's also a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. I saw it a lot. I would see babies that were like 25 pounds overweight. Wow. And I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, they're yeah. just like two years old. Like, I'm like, what, what's going on? You know, they're mm -hmm. very young from like, itty bitties to one to two and I worked in an ADA camp and we would let the kids have fun who had type 1 diabetes and some of them were well taken care of and some and you know I think it's just a system of how can we do preventative care and then coming back also culturally too I was really skinny at one point they thought I was sick Lori mm. <laughs> they're like you gotta put some 
pounds on you. Right. Like Hispanic culture, like we want you thick. We want you meaty. Like if you ain't eating the plate and, you know, it is so hard. I get Right. That. Yeah. Because that and I feel your defeat, Lori. I really do. Because that's that's another reason why I, I couldn't stay in that system, mm -hmm. because how can I tell someone culturally and and be very gentle and let them know, hey, you know what? I know this is a part of culture, but in order for us to stay healthy, right, with our A1C levels, cholesterol, hypertension, heart, all those great things, we kind of have to slow it down and reteach them mm -hmm. nutrition. And, right. And you're absolutely um, right. We do have to, there has to be more teaching in, in our society, you know, but and I understand the cultural yeah. side of it as, as well. Um, my girlfriend is Hispanic and her family is, is pretty, a lot of them are all overweight and, and she took, you, you see it, you yeah, see it. Her, yeah. She took after her dad, which was <laughs> very tall and thin. And so they were always like, eat girl, eat, eat, you know, they were like shoving down the tortillas and beans and everything with her. And she's just like, girl, you're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and she's yeah, like, yeah, oh. yeah. But um, okay, so I can I can accept that. I I do understand what you're saying. I just was wondering, and and the sad thing is, is that inexpensive food is shitty food, you know. Unfortunately, and that is so sad, you know. In in uh, in America, Bro. is that I I got you a little frozen. Oh, that's okay. I, I apologize. You're back. You're. I, I hope I'm I look sure good frozen. You look good frozen. <laughs> but what I was what I was saying is that unfortunately our our food system the way it is is really inexpensive food. It's shitty food. It's terrible, you know. And so with that being said, I mean it is hard, and I understand what you're saying about a lower income, you know, family, and and maybe they are on food stamps, and this is all they can afford, and this is all they can buy. And I get that. But here's my next question, though. I'm going to go there and go. Push well, me. I, I'm Come like, on, well, Lord, wait a minute. Guys. I'm like this. I'm like, well, wait a minute. This kid is huge. How much is this kid eating? You know, and if you only have a certain mm -hmm. amount of, of money to feed these kids, you would think it would almost be the opposite. Well, I mean, high caloric density, right? Think about it. A small cookie, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Compared to a fruit. Gotcha. I think it's shoved down. Right, the volume and quality was mm -hmm. an issue too when we would do that. We would actually break down price points at $25. We're gonna feed a family of four, two parents, two children, mm -hmm. right? And uh, let's make sure we meet all the nutritional needs. I'm not gonna lie, Lori, this was about five years ago. It was still very, very expensive. Oh, I know. Um, you know, to me, even a portion of that, you know, um, healthy nutritional stance that is regulated for us and i do agree with you it is very frustrating when you can't get that portion um but here's the kicker that i always love to tell people when you're in front of you right in front of anyone guess what's the closest thing in front of you before besides your phone food mm -hmm. water drinks mm -hmm. it's always closer to you than my partner will ever be 99 percent right. of the day Right. Um, <laughs> and I think that's a thing, too. Right. It, it is so accessible and it is so close to us. And that relationship with food, it's it's difficult. And it's that's a whole other thing. Difficult. And it could be it could be, like you said, trauma. I mean, and this mm -hmm. and, and with that being said, um, one of my best friends growing up, she kept weight on her because as a kid, unfortunately, she was molested. And so therefore, she figured in her mind that if she were overweight, then the men would find her unattractive and they'd leave her alone. So I found that mm -hmm. fascinating, you know, so. Absolutely. I mean, speak on that just a little bit as far as like when it comes to trauma, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. So let's let's take a, a step back. Right. So when we are talking about anything, right, molestation, right, um, naturally humans, we look at things by appearance, mm -hmm. attractiveness. Mm -hmm. What does society say? At least we'll talk about American culture. We want to be thin, beautiful, you know, average, normal type of thing. Right. So this is what we talk about protect protective factors. 
if I can hide and be very tiny, mm-hmm. right? And if I can make myself also big and unattractive, right? If that's what this person's protective factor is, right? I'm going to get as big as I can. And if I'm big, I can also overtake them. Mm-hmm. If I'm puny, they can't do nothing to me, right? Mm-hmm. It's not even just about the weight and, and societal rules, right? And I just want, you know, for the record of people to know, like, body empowerment, you know? Um, but that is a protective factor. I'm going to make myself look like I didn't look like when this trauma happened to me. Mm. So I'm going to be someone I don't notice in front of a mirror. Interesting. Whether it's 10, 15 pounds, I'm mm-hmm. going to cut my hair. That's a very big thing when we go through those first stages. They'll either shave their hair, cut it, dye it, even very different colors. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're, we're trying to figure out why that part happened to me mm-hmm. and what was responsible for it, which it's not their fault at all, right? But the brain is trying to say, what is it? You know, let's morph into a different body, something that they've never touched, seen, or anything before. And then we're going to walk with that. You know, and uh, that's not always the case, right? right? But Certainly that is. has been some other things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, to me, that does make sense, Absolutely. right? Um, you're stronger, you're bigger, you know, you can lift heavier. Um, and also, it, it feels like you are a different person if you look at yourself in the mirror. Mm-hmm. You gain 20 pounds or you lose the 20 pounds. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people look at themselves differently in the mirror and that is something very, very important to them that people who have not gone through that series of unfortunate events understand. Right. Right. And so, you know, when we look at the fight, flight, freeze, the cement and shame, um, and then the cry for help, those two make sense to the body and the brain protecting mm-hmm. itself. Because this is something in society that we don't talk about. Right. It's very hidden. We wrap it up in a pretty box. We're like, I was raped and molested. Here you go. And we're like, what do we do with this? Mm -hmm. What do we do with this? And that's not fair. Right. Right. That's not fair for them. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's where this beauty of empowerment and coming on your show and talking to the community about it, right? That there's more to that. And when you do they gain those extra pounds Mm -hmm. it's a normal response right right the brain is so powerful right if i can leave anything with you all the brain is so powerful it is going to do anything in its way to protect you absolutely and remember how i talked about those firefighters earlier yeah how they can be really great at helping us yeah or it can be not so great and then that's when we have to work with that turmoil inside right you're like okay What's going on here, right? And a manager part can also appear with that molestation and rape and say, nope, you don't have any of the N-words. You don't have no needs, none. You Mm. can't look beautiful because if you're beautiful, guess what's going to happen? It's your fault you were X, Y, and Z. Definitely, yeah, And that's just in the lens of trauma and the lens of, you know, IFS, right? Mm -hmm. Those parts are going to be fighting at all costs. So guess what wins? The brain. The brain. At least in my idea. <laughs> it's it's fascinating to me because, you know, when we speak of trauma, um, there are so many different levels of trauma. And this is what I was we were talking about earlier as well. You know, there's the emotional trauma, there's financial trauma. Um, there's all these different traumas and and yet we don't think of them sometimes as trauma. Mm-hmm. You know, and like yeah, you said absolutely. earlier, we just tuck them in back in the head. Don't think about it. Mm-hmm. Let's, you know, just pull the carpet right Put over it and box. let's just keep moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, and I, Until... I'm, I'm very guilty of that. I mean, sometimes I will, I will, something will happen in my life and I'll be like, okay, cool. I can deal with that. Boom. Put a rug over it, whatever, or, or I'll deal with it later or whatever it may be. And so that's yeah, why yeah. I think that seeking, it's not even like seeking out. I mean, it sounds a, such a weird word to say, seeking out a therapist, but you can't look in a yellow pages and just grab a therapist. Most of the time, it's always from a referral, you know, type of situation. Referral. Oh, mm-hmm. I love that you brought this up. Yes. How to find a therapist. How Where to we go? find a right? therapist. Because, yes, right. Because 
there's so many different types of us, mm -hmm. right? Um, there can be trauma-informed care. There's people who do CBT, which is cognitive behavior therapy. So that what they, they'll be like, oh, you have these type of thoughts? Well, let's reframe them. Let's fix them up, you know? And, and there's so many different types of therapists. And I love that you brought this up because I feel like it's so important, right? We go on psychology today. A lot of people don't know about that. You can actually do control find and do a filter, say like anxiety or, um, you know, molestation or uh, LGBTQ or, you know, Hispanic or cultural or anything on there. There's career therapists that help you with your career. You know, there's so many different types of us out there. And I don't want people to ever give up. I always think this crack of this joke when I meet my clients first. I'm like, look, we're going to see if this rolls. You don't like me. It's OK. Fire me. I'll send you a referral, whoever's fitting. Um, and I tell them, look, it's like if I'm your attorney, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to go to this big court case. Your girl got to have your back. Yeah. Right. It has to be this uh, somebody like a neutral working foundation, mm -hmm. because if it's not, guess what I'm going to end up doing? Mm -hmm. I'm going to open a wound up and leave them bleeding. Mm. I don't want to do that to anybody. Right. And that's, that's how I know, okay, maybe we're not going to be a match. Let's figure this out because I don't want to leave someone walking out of therapy wounded like a deer. And then they're going to come back and they're going to be like, fuck therapy. This shit sucks. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, yeah, because I just wounded you. And I didn't, I didn't even have time to help you, you know, process that. Right. And you know, that that's like the psychoeducation that I feel like therapists, we really need to give that to our clients because they come in and they're like, oh, I got a lot of problems that I'm going to talk about the most superficial one. I had anxiety today because someone flipped me off. I don't know. You know, <laughs> like... <laughs> and it's like we, we gotta we gotta do the tango mm -hmm. you know or whatever dance they want to dance we have to do that because then i ain't doing shit mm -hmm. i'm doing my job you know what i mean and that's a disservice to my community that's a disservice to that person and that's something that i will never want to do and don't get me wrong us as therapists we're not perfect <laughs> so so you're, what you're saying is like give give a therapist more than just one session, at least two, Absolutely. three, four to see how the dance is going. Let me tell you something. So through trauma-informed care, research shows an average from anywhere from eight to one year, mm -hmm. the real work actually starts. Oh, wow. Right? Um, because we're just getting to know each other. Think about it. Yeah. We're just getting to know each other. And I'm going to ask you on the first day, your deepest, darkest secrets. <laughs> right and I'm gonna be like okay and then the next session okay what do you got for me Lori let's mm -hmm. talk right and so it's like we're just meeting at a cafe right we're meeting at a cafe we're talking and then one day you're gonna give me you're gonna unload you're gonna give me one of your bricks mm -hmm. and guess what I hold that brick for you now gotcha I'm like okay that's what I'm here for right you're gonna unload all those things that you need to work on. Right. Because then that is the work we're doing in therapy. It's right. And don't get me wrong, superficial stuff is great, but it's when we're comfortable to now hold hands and dance. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and then I think a lot of people have the misconception of therapists because we have a joke that goes on. <laughs> and that is this. So I went to therapy today and and how did that go? And everybody laughs and they'll go, how did that make you feel? <laughs> you know, because it's like, that's, that's always the, the you know, as, as you're talking to your therapist and you're unloading and all of a sudden, you know, they go, and how does that make you feel? <laughs> you know, and so it's like kind of the, and yet the funny thing is, is I, I've been in therapy a couple of times and yet she has not asked me that question yet, which is like, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to ask you right now, Lori, how do you feel about, you know, us sharing about therapy? And like, does it make you curious? That's my biggest thing. I don't really ask, like, how does that make you feel? You know what? My thing is like, let's get curious. What parts oh, I'm, of you I'm fascinated you with feel? my, I'm fascinated with yeah. my brain and how it works and, you know, how my emotions work and, oh, that's interesting. Why did I respond that way? And why do I feel this way? I am extremely curious about my brain, my own self sometimes. 
you know, sometimes I'll glaze yeah. over it. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I'll glaze over it just like the normal person because We're human. We're human. it's, it's, it's interesting. And then the other thing is, is uh, we started talking about like the chaos in your life, you know, and I was like, what does that mean? Oh chaos in your life. I, I love had to, that. I had to ask chaos? the question because chaos to me just seems like, Wah! you know, chaos. But mm -hmm. then it was explained to me as, no, it doesn't have to be that way. Chaos, when, what we mean by chaos in your, in your life, in your work life is you have to constantly be busy. It has to be ever so changing for you. It can't be the normal nine to five. It can't be the mundane. It can't be the boring. Chaos is moving. Everything is, it's changing from day to day to day. And I'm like, absolutely, that's my, that's my work life. And I love it though. <laughs> you know, I do. That's, so let me ask you, let me ask you, Lori. Right? How does that make you feel? A, ther <laughs> a therapeutic question, a therapeutic question. What happens to you when it's quiet? Um, I get bored. And when I get bored, um, I, I, it's interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Be I just curious. get bored when I'm quiet. However, I can be quiet when I leave my home and I go to a beach and I sit there and I look at the ocean and I'm in, I'm in with nature. Once I'm one with nature. So that's your mindfulness. I can quiet my mind. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. But I'm going to turn it back. Okay. You didn't answer my question, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, therapy 101 on chilling with ice. You're like, oh shit, let's 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 do a rewind right here. I froze. I ain't gonna answer that. But look, I don't want to play anymore. Right when we, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Look, look, I already feel you. I see you touching your skin. You're like, I ain't paying this shit. I ain't doing it. Damn, this is this is inexpensive though. It's it's a, it's a podcast. Perfect. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'll do. Oh my yeah. god, I got a niche. I'll just bring on all the therapists and I'll get my free therapy on podcasting. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely, and we're still going to be broke. That's that's the world we're going. All right, wait, wait, wait. but you know what? I I came and asked you about that boredomness, that silence. Okay, because there may be a part in Lori's internal family system that is like, oh shit, I don't like it quiet because I don't know intrusive thoughts or like, oh shit, I got to get this shit done or perfectionism or anything. I mean, I'm just kind of throwing things out there in the wind. Um, Keep throwing until I can as grab to one. why, Lori. <laughs> yeah, as why Lori just likes to always be busy, 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 mm -hmm. right? And what happens when that part touches Lori's boredom button, right? Hmm. I'm, I'm going to push that boredom button right there. Well, I, right? as a kid, though, I was always that kid that goes, I'm bored. You know, that was I was that kid that if I wasn't outside, touched, yeah, if I wasn't outside climbing trees, you or, touched childhood. I love it. Exactly, <laughs> touching, you know, jumping off roofs or climbing trees or tackling the boys next door. I was bored, and my mom would get so mad at me. I'm bored. Stop it. Go outside and play. You know. So she would click in. There you go. You hit it. You hit it, Lord. Look what happened right there. I'm bored, go outside and play. Oh. If adult Lori is bored, go outside and work. Go outside and find a podcast. Go outside and find something. Holy shit, you look at that. that it only cost me a podcast, Jeff. Hey, it's, it's really affordable. <laughs> it's very affordable. Jeff's like, I'm going to I'm gonna be on the mic next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll switch things around. It's chilling with Jeff. <laughs> yeah. And then no, I'm going right. to be doing the ice. I do Sorry. feel like a lot of people do get a lot of uh, therapeutic uh, positivity through podcasting, though. As, as many podcasts that I've engineered, there there is a lot that people just become open about, especially when they have a therapist on on as a, as a guest and everything. It does become like some kind oh, of a form of therapy that. session. But even if not, then it's like, oh, you know what? That conversation was great. I feel much better about myself just by talking some things out, yeah. whether, whether you had an intention to or not. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Or it's like watching the Absolutely. Housewives of Beverly Hills or the Housewives of Atlanta. Like my sister goes, I watch this just to make sure that I, she goes, I watch it because it makes me feel normal. And I was like, I, love that. I find myself I normal love that. by She's not She's like, watching. I find, <laughs> I know, right? you don't want to ask me what I watch, okay? <laughs> okay, we won't ask you. What, do you. what do you watch? Don't ask her. <laughs> You, you, Lori's like, oh, no, 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 don't do she it. No, like a true actually, crime I watch. Kind of girl. 
No, I watch the weirdest shit, guys. You know what I like to watch oh, that yeah. actually calms me? You're going to lose it. I love watching people wash their rugs. <laughs> what is wrong? <laughs> or like with power you? wash? Yeah, or power okay, wait. wash. No, no, like no, no, no. Fun. That makes total sense because you like to see the satisfaction of it. It's a satisfying watch. It's a satisfying yes. watching. It's like yes. if you were to power wash something, it's a satisfaction of watching it go from A to Z. I understand that. I can't yes, watch it on TV. I'd be bored. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? But for me, that calms me down. And another thing is I love watching plants. I'm a big green thumb. Mm -hmm. You know, when they start from a seed, I love seeing their like evolution. Those are my two dirty secrets that you'll find on my phone. Absolutely. It's like the FBI is like, I'm going to read your cell phone. Right. She, why does she like watching dirty rugs being cleaned and plumbed? I know. That, that's interesting right there. So finding the right, yeah, yeah. I mean, finding the right therapist is so very important. And I totally understand that. Absolutely. And people need to give them a chance. And and not only, yes, and here's so the thing I want to touch on too, just for people out there listening. And that is, you don't have to feel like you're crazy to go to a therapist. You know, a lot of people go, oh, I don't need therapy. And it's not about feeling crazy or, or anything like that. It's sometimes it's checking in with who you are and the things that are going on around you. Like, okay, how am I dealing with this? You know? Um, yeah, I love that word, checking in. I do. Love I I love I, I, lo I actually I actually love therapy. It's fun because you get to sit and talk to yourself, talk to somebody who doesn't know you whatsoever for an entire mm -hmm. hour about yourself, and it's great. <laughs> you, know? you just close the door and you're like, all right, I exactly, got this. Exactly. Right. It, it's it's soothing. It, it is. They don't soothing. tell me about um, their problems. They don't tell me about their overwhelmness. <laughs> they sit and yeah, listen yeah. to me and my overwhelmness or my problems or something. But no, that's why I really do. I encourage therapy for a lot of people. It's not that you have to feel like you're crazy. I don't feel like I'm crazy. I'm just checking in to see where I'm at because I have so much going on in my life that I want to make sure that I don't get overwhelmed and that I am exactly. dealing with everything the way that it should be dealt with. I love it. Absolutely. So a few things that therapists do, we give you life tools. Mm -hmm. We're not here to give you advice. We're here to be a guide, right? What you come in with, you're like, oh, I'm dealing with boredom and I see some anxiousness, but you don't believe you're anxious. Guess what? That is not my doing to fix. Mm -hmm. My job here is to fix ice boredom. Right. That's what I'm going to do. Gotcha. Whatever a person doesn't see an issue as a therapist, a good therapist, we don't touch on that because mm -hmm. that is not an issue being brought to us as a guide. Right. And then what we do is we give you tools to manage your day to day life. Right. So what I like to tell people is what does anxiety feel like to you? Depression. What does it feel like? Um, the touch, smell, anxiety uh, can do these weird things to our body sensations. Right. And so I do that for everything. Mm -hmm. What happens when you walk into work? Do you get like a little hairs? Do you start sweating? Uh, do you get like over talkative and just share everything, your deepest, darkest secrets? And we're like, okay, let's let's get us some tools and skills that can help us, right? And I love how you do checking in with therapy because sometimes what tools worked for us the past year, the past few months, when I was a teenager, may not suffice in today in the here and now in the present. Mm -hmm. Right? Good because sometimes this tool helped, right? with a particular instance, but we've learned to overcome it, manage it. And then life just throws shit at you. And you're like, okay, what do I do now? What I love to tell people, it's like a dung beetle, you know, they roll up shit and then it breaks apart and then you move on. <laughs> and then we'll roll into something else. And we're like, okay, how do we fix this? What is this like? Because that's life for you. And the reality of everyday living, there is no perfectionism. There's no perfect eight to five, there's no perfect marriage, there's no perfect job. And things get thrown at us. And I love to always throw comedy and just like funny things. So people can remember, mm -hmm. and just kind of normalize those things. And I want to go back to what you shared with like, Oh, it's so great. I get to just talk to her for one hour. Guess what? That's storytelling. There you go. That's narrative. You're mm -hmm. giving that special moment with this other human being 
trust me, as therapists, we are so fortunate to like hear everyone's story and it feels amazing to get to be that one special person in someone's life that gets to hear these things. That's interesting because I would think that a therapist would be like, oh my God, here comes that person. And um, damn, I don't know if I could spend an entire hour and listening to them and having them cry. And I mean, you guys have to have a very special, wonderful ability to actually handle these these situations. I mean, there's no doubt when my father passed away, mm -hmm. I, I went to a therapist and I literally sat there and cried for an entire hour. And I never went back because I felt great afterwards. I was like, okay, that's all I needed. <laughs> you know right that's that connection uh -huh. yeah absolutely that is that connection that piece that we're like where do we get this yeah. right and that's where that part we're going to talk about is co-regulation mm. we have a partner or a family member that's healthy can co-regulate we're gonna our body's gonna mimic that hmm. right so if we have a healthy role model therapist day mm -hmm. guess what we're gonna be doing we're gonna be learning those features, the brain's going to analyze facial expressions, tone of voice. If I start talking really low, you're going to want to really pay attention. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's Is that why therapists do that? that. Yeah. yeah. We talk real soft. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, but I mean, we're not sexy in like that really long, sexy couch. <laughs> Sorry, guys, to break it to you on the podcast. Uh, we're with really thick cardigans. and We just sit in a chair or sit next to you in a couch. <laughs> it's not that sexy as, you know, right. uh, HBO Max makes it seem like. <laughs> but yeah, like Aisha. all of those things are great. I thank uh, you so uh, much for coming on this podcast. I mean, and yeah. sharing this with us because I I think mental health and, and in today's day and age, the where we're at, it's so important. And the work that you're doing is absolutely fabulous. And you're out there helping Thank all you. these people. And I just, I mean, I'm a big advocate so you, of, of mental health and, you know, seeking yeah. out a therapist. Thank you. And wait absolutely, a minute, so they can go absolutely. on Psychology Today. Is that what it was? If they were actually yes. looking for Psychology Today. Okay. And uh, hit that, uh, what is it? Uh, maybe Jeff, you can help me shift control F <laughs> to have a little search bar because the whole list will come out. How oh, old yeah, are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, shift. how, how old is she? Uh, <laughs> control shift delete. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Oh. Exactly. Well, damn. <laughs> control shift delete. <laughs> I'm an old soul. I'm all looking oh, at my I'm keyboard. Kidding, I think kidding, it's I'm just kidding. command F and right. it will, yeah, it'll pop up. And that way, you know, your viewers can see this and then they can be like, okay, I want to look for grief or I want to look for anxiety or intrusive thoughts. Anything that the world can find, trust me, we're there. And if we don't have the answer for it, we will find it for you. Now, you know, and then that's the fun thing, normalizing things. So here's my question to you, because I always get this ask, this question asked to me when I'm on different podcasts, and that is this. What would you want to share with the world if you were on a microphone at this time and we were talking about therapy and mental health? What would you actually want to share and what would your message be? What's important? Oh, this is going to be a tear jerker for Go me. Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. We love crying um, people. I think I want the world to know, um, no matter what life tosses at you, no matter what you were born in or born with, there's nothing in this world that cannot be solved with a person in front of you, with a person next to you supporting you. And if you cannot find that, you can find that in therapy. You know, you can find quote unquote normalcy. You can find coping skills, coping tools, and people to help you over that bridge because every life is so precious. We do not need to lose a life because our brain and our mental health took a different shift. Mm -hmm. And it is very normal. Mm -hmm. We are chemicals and hormones, and you know, life um, throws this and know that we can always connect and build this right back up where then you feel confident you feel safe and your life is worth living because you don't know the next person you're going to touch and connect with and again have that storytelling time i think it's the beauty of mental health 
and connection. And it is the reason why I'm on here today, because I got to have some storytelling with Lori and be on here. And so that would be my message to the world. And don't ever feel alone. Someone is there. Even if you have to hire a therapist, oh, that's why we like have that. a job, guys. Even if you have to hire someone, somebody's there. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And no, the world's listening. There is free therapy. You guys go to your city and you guys contact the mental health authority and you will have access to care. That's amazing. I did not know that. Sliding scales, you will find pro bono. Mm -hmm. And there is a will and there is a way. And don't let those really sad days or those days you want to give up be the end of it because there is no end of it. We are here for everybody. That's and awesome. That is my message. I love that message. Thank you so much. I'm Absolutely. so happy I met you in El Paso. It was so yes, much fun. Me too. I was so excited. I had so many laughs. I'm all like, <laughs> you know, side note, I was telling my husband, I was like, you'd be like, how did she get that therapist on there? And she's going to be like, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually did share with Jeff the, the, what I did sign for you, which was hysterical. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Look wonderful. at his laugh. I love it. I love it. It's so colorful. <laughs> yes. Very colorful. It yes. Was very yes. colorful. And, and I think I'm going to leave that as a small little secret on my podcast that people yeah. would have to message me it's and a go, deep, dark secret. What yeah. was that rainbow thing that you signed for her? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. God, absolutely. Awesome. I love it. Thank Jeff you was like, so much. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. This was thank fun. Thank you. And thank you, Jeff. Thank yeah. you, eyes. I really appreciate it. And again, if you guys ever need anything, or a friend or anything, Lori, give me a call. Oh, you're, like, you're hey. in my phone now, girl. You got my <laughs> I can phone number. Find everything for we're, you all. <laughs> we're we're friends now. This is the way it is. You know, we're I'll connected. text you and go. Absolutely. Look, I can't afford Absolutely. my therapist this week. So, what do you got? Thirty minutes from now. <laughs> You got any advice you can give me exactly. for right now? <laughs> you, you know what that advice is going to be? What? I'm going to tell you, name your five senses. I'm going gonna, gonna to tell you, name your five senses. Is there some ice cubes around? They're going to hold the ice cubes. Let me tell you why. Why? It, it actually resets the central nervous system. What? Because your brain is trying to figure out what's going on. Yes. So, Jeff, you got some ice cubes <laughs> I can go in get some, but I know, but, I know, but because I'm around ice so much, I just feel so good about myself. Now Aww. I know why. You feel so, oh, look at that. You see what we're that. going on? Yes. Okay, wait. So you're telling me that if you hold an ice cube in your fingertips or in your hand, which yes, one? We're going to hold the ice cubes in our hands. Okay. Okay. In our hands. Gotcha. And then we're going to be like, okay, what does this feel like? And we're going to start naming the senses. Okay. Oh, shit. It feels really cold. Okay. And then I'm starting to feel numbness. I'm starting to feel the ice drip, you know? Um, and then we're just going to hold on to it. Hold on to it. Guess what's going to happen into our system of regulation? Hmm. The brain is going to now see this as a perceived threat. And I say threat as something, you know, fun, you know? Right. And it's going to be like, oh, shit, why do we have something super cold in our hand? Mm -hmm. That is what the brain is saying. Okay. Instead of blah, 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 scribbles in our head. Okay. <laughs> you know? So you're saying it resets And that's it. how we can reset it. Yes. Interesting. That's what we call CPR for our, our amygdala, the smoke detector. Um, another way we can do that um, is uh, we're going to sense how we feel. Are we stressed, numbed, worried? We're going to notice like intensity. And then the same thing, we're going to apply some pressure. And then we're also going to touch the body. And we are going to listen to stuff we weren't listening to before have you ever gone to like target and it's blasting this booming music mm -hmm. and then you're like oh shit what's next on my groceries mm -hmm. you don't hear that booming music anymore you're right the brain yeah. will filter it out wow you're right we're not being mindful but right when you walk in yeah. you go oh my god boom 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 it's like i'm in the damn clubs again mm -hmm. you know and then you're shopping you don't hear it. And then you're walking out, you're mindful, you're like, oof, I didn't die at the grocery shop. 
place, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> it's like a battlefield in there. And you're listening to that music again huh. because you're starting to use your senses. And that's what we kind of do with that. And the mind is so powerful. Laurie, you got, you got a minute for one more? Go. So usually we do this in person. I'm going to give you the most juiciest, biggest lemon from Positano. So here, I have it in my hands, Laura. Mm -hmm. I'm giving it to you. Got it. Get the lemon. Got it. You got the lemon. I got the lemon in my hand. Okay. Two, two hands. Okay. Two we got hands. two hands. Okay. That's a big one. You're going to have it in there. I want you to squeeze the lemon. Just kind of feel it. Okay. Feel that lemon. What does it feel like? What does the texture feel like? Uh, the lemon is kind of slimy because it's a lemon and it's kind of hard on the outside, but it's, I don't know, it's kind of soft at the same time, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hard, Put slimy, it to your mouth. Soft. I want oh, you to smell okay. the lemon. What does it smell like? Sweet, sour, like a lemon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I want you to bite that lemon now. Oh, damn. Bite the lemon. <laughs> You're going to bite that lemon. Okay. That's where my mouth bite just it. puckered. Like it was like just intense, the sourness of it. Look, open your hand. Open your hand. It's an invisible lemon and look how strong your brain is. Oh, damn. That was cool. That was good. That was really cool. That was good. Interesting. I, right? I, was, I was doing it too. So that, 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 <laughs> Jeff. Was, that was so cool. <laughs> Did you feel like your mouth water? Oh, I, I definitely tasted it. So yeah. the way I, when I took a Isn't bite, isn't that insane? Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't had a lemon in a while. Me either, neither. So I definitely yeah, more of a lime guy, but you know, lemon. I am fascinated by how our brain works. I, I mean, literally, if I, if I weren't into health and fitness and everything else, yes, I would have probably went into studying the brain and becoming some type of therapist or something. But I'm fascinated. I invited it. you to a class. I, I, know, I know, I know. I'm fascinated with it. <laughs> next time, That's next time. That's beautiful. But what see, a great analogy. How powerful, guys. We are thousands of miles away. Mm -hmm. And look what just happened right now in a few seconds. Yep. All over. Right. Zoom. And so the power of therapy, right? That's the power of therapy mm -hmm. is retraining those different parts and thoughts of the brain with someone you feel safe with and connected and can co-regulate with you. Do you ever do therapy that over Zoom? It's magic. Yeah, I was going to ask. I do. I do. Okay. So I want I you at this moment to tell people where they can find you if that's the case okay so i am actually gonna be switching to agency okay. <laughs> so you'll see an update and my psychology today <laughs> okay um but you guys can follow me on instagram i have um you guys are gonna laugh i'm so old school i didn't have any social media i was like oh crap i'm gonna be on a podcast i gotta make something you're, you're so, a therapist you're a therapist health. i mean nobody yeah, really yeah. do you guys have social media <laughs> We don't. We don't because we connect with human connection yeah, all the time. Exactly. That's, then that's there's, my Then thing. there's the post of like, oh, this person today. Right. Yeah. Exactly. There might yeah. be somebody on my podcast that goes, right. wow, I could really connect with her. Yeah, yeah. You know, she's Hispanic. I she gets that. it. She yeah. had a rough childhood. She can understand where I'm coming from. So that's why I asked the question. If there's a listener yeah, out there perfect, today perfect. that feels like they can connect yes. with you. Absolutely. Uh, so you guys will be seeing an update on my psychology today. Okay. And then um, I am, you guys can follow me at um, House of Dagger Therapy at Gmail. House Brand of new. Dagger. Brand new. It's a baby, guys. Don't judge me just yet. Okay, wait, <laughs> House so of Dagger Therapy. Ha yes. Okay. So how do you, how are you spelling da Dagger? Because you have an H in your last name. Yes. Yeah, so D-A-G-H-E-R. D-A-G-H-E-R. Got it. So yes. House of yes. Dagger Therapy. Yes. And then they can just Google me. They'll see my update on uh, my psychology today if they want to connect. Um, I am Texas based. So we I, I'm fully just Texas. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to wait to see if we can hopefully branch up the T so I can see more people from different states. But Beautiful. that's an ongoing lobbying situation. Right. <laughs> of course. But yeah, that's where you guys can find me and connect with me. Oh, my God. Um, Thank Aisha you. Dagger. Aisha, absolutely, how do you spell an Aisha absolutely. for my audience? A I S H A. A I S H A. And then the last name's Dagger, D A T H E R. So cool. Yeah. Perfect. 
Aisha, yeah. thank you so much for today. I know this was a Absolutely. great podcast and hopefully it touched a few people out thank there you, when they're listening because that's really what yeah, I, I love to either entertain or, you know, inform um, different people out there. That thank they, you for and having that's me what on makes here. Thank you. I so appreciate it. Thank you so it. much. I appreciate you. Thank I you for the time. You. Thank you, Jeff, for, for hooking it up, for making this process go, and uh, go eat some lemons. <laughs> Let's do it. There's a lemon tree right outside. Let's go. Thank I'm you. Jealous. I'm I jealous. I know, right? I love it. Thank you so much for Have listening to Chillin' with Ice. Take care. Thank you so much, Aisa. Thank you for uh, thank you for listening to Chillin' with Ice. And this is where legends live on. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to Chillin' with Ice. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share wherever you listen to your podcast. Remember to follow us on Patreon and YouTube at Chillin' With Ice. And on Instagram and TikTok, you can follow me at lori.ice.fetric. I look forward to chilling with you next time here on Chillin' With Ice.